You've heard the phrase that most engine wear occurs at startup, but the reality is most engine wear occurs while the engine is cold. So what we do in the first 30 seconds and certainly the first five minutes makes a big difference to the longevity and the reliability of your engine. So some people say that you should just leave the engine idling on the drive until it gets up to temperature. Some people say that they sit in the car and they wait for the idle to drop down and then drive off gently. And other people just say, get in the car and drive it. Put your foot to the floor, use the full range of RPM. And that's the best way of warming up the engine. So we're just going to look at all of these different angles, really, on the subject of cold starts. And it's key really that we understand what's going on during the cold start process. And it would be wrong to just think about the engine because you've also got the transmission as well. And we need that transmission to get up to temperature. So if you're sitting on the drive idling, it's also worth bearing in mind there's nothing happening with the transmission. If you've got an auto transmission, you need to be in gear and driving around for that to warm up. The idea of warming up to avoid injuries is quite natural and common to us, but do we afford the same courtesy to our cars, particularly our engines? Do we allow them to warm up? Is it really that important? So is cold start terrors a myth or is it a fact? Does it really matter what you do to your engine when it is actually cold? So the components in the engine are made of metal. So metal expands and contracts. The, the ductility and the elasticity of metal changes as it gets warm. So it's key really that the metals have had an opportunity to adjust fully to how they were designed to operate in a warm environment. You probably won't see this with your naked eye, but the change is happening as those components warm up. So most of the components start off relatively small and as they heat up, they expand. It's important to know that if you've got forged parts, particularly forged pistons and forged cranks, they expand at a different rate to non-forged metals. So they tend to start off even smaller. And as the engine warms up, they start to expand. Now, you want everything to be correctly bedded into place. So as the piston's going up and down and handling the explosion going on inside the cylinders, you really want that piston and the piston rings to be as close to the cylinder wall as possible. Otherwise, you're just going to lose all of that energy. If it's not fitting precisely, it's going to rattle around. And that's a condition that we refer to as piston slap. Now, all engines experience piston slap, but it's usually to a very small degree unless the wear and tear has happened or you've got a particularly unusual high performance engine where there's a lot more expansion going to go on inside the engine. So things rattle around a lot more when it's cold. If you drive the car too hard in that cold warm up period where the piston slap is happening and the pistons effectively just moving around inside the cylinder, you're going to be damaging the piston rings, the pistons and the cylinders themselves. So I've actually seen score marks on the cylinder walls. I've seen cracked pistons and damaged piston rings just because the car has been driven too hard during that warm up cycle. So all the while it's cold, there's a lot more lateral side to side motion going on. But as it warms up, things start to bed in and most of the energy from the explosion is pushing the piston down. There's very little lateral movement when it's all warm. So the other big aspect of driving a cold engine is that the oil the lifeblood of the engine, the lubricant that ensures that metal surfaces are not experiencing great amounts of friction, it's not up to temperature. You're not getting the lubrication that you do when the oil is at the correct temperature. So oil is much thicker, it's more viscous when it is cold. So allowing the engine oil to warm up is probably the single biggest factor in the engine wear that goes on. When you first start the engine, it does take a few seconds for the oil to properly circulate around the engine. So it's really good when you first get in the car to start it up and just leave the engine running for five to 10 seconds before you start messing around with the throttle and putting the engine under any load. So in that very low stress situation, it gets an opportunity to raise the oil pressure and circulate that oil around the engine and start the lubrication. The other thing that happens within the engine during this warm up cycle is it's not running on the closed loop system. So the closed loop system is where it's monitoring the exhaust gases and it's trimming the amount of fuel that goes in. So the ECU 
doesn't trim to that extent during that warm up cycle. And the whole aim is to get the engine up to temperature. So your catalytic converter is in the exhaust and it needs to be warm to operate efficiently. And until that gets warm, you're chucking out all sorts of pollutants into the environment. More importantly, those unburnt fuel particles are entering the catalyst. So that can cause the catalyst to degrade in its performance. It's basically coating the catalytic surfaces so they no longer react with the exhaust gases going over because there's a, a layer of fuel over them. And also that fuel itself can burn within the catalyst. So you've effectively got a second combustion chamber where the catalyst just starts getting really hot. It will eventually glow and it will burn itself out and you'll actually lose that honeycomb structure of the catalyst just because it's getting too hot. And if you've got a car with a DPF filter, a diesel engine, that can also cause problems. So when an engine is cold, it's nowhere near as efficient. It's producing a lot more pollutants and there's a lot more moisture build up inside the engine. The heat in the engine is not sufficient to evaporate off all of that moisture that's um, building up. You'll actually see the moisture collecting in the exhaust. So a little bit more on that later, because that's something that can happen and degrade the long term reliability of your car just through poor startup habit. So warming up the engine. This is the single biggest thing that you can do as a driver. So we've mentioned already that you just allow the engine to tick over for a few seconds to allow the oil to circulate. It doesn't take very long for the oil to circulate, but you don't want to get in and start putting the engine under load immediately when you've started it. So for most drivers, putting their safety belt on or their seat belt on after they've started the engine just provides enough of a delay for the engine oil to start lubricating around the engine and get the circulation going. The two things that you must never do on a cold engine is just leave the engine idling. So when a car is idling, it is just dribbling enough fuel into the engine to keep it ticking over, to prevent it from stalling. On a cold engine, it's doing its best to avoid stalling and it's so much more likely to stall because it's not kicked into its closed loop circuit in most cases. Obviously, it's gonna depend a little bit on whether you've got a diesel engine or what your engine type is and how the manufacturers have actually designed that engine. But for most engines, they will idle fairly high. The revs will drop a little bit as the temperature starts to rise. And then when the engine is up to operating temperature, it will drop right down to the usual tick over that you experience. So during that idling process, the minimal amount of fuel is used. So it's not there to raise the temperature of the engine. An engine will in fact take substantially longer to warm up when it's just idling. Some people have quoted 15 at 20 minutes in some cases in these extremely cold climates for the car to get enough heat in for people to be able to drive off. So I have to accept that in some environments it is just too cold to jump in the car and start driving around. So is it best to just sit there and let the engine idle? Most people I've spoke to that are passionate about cars and preserving the lifespan of the car will say to put the engine under a slight load. So that means just holding the throttle very slightly so you're beyond the tick over. The engine has got a little bit of work to do and it will warm up substantially quicker when we actually do that instead of just waiting for it to get up to temperature. Cars will idle almost indefinitely all the while they've got fuel in the tank. So the RPMs are relatively low. Things in the engine are moving fairly slowly. So with the exception of the very first bit, when you first start the engine and the oil is not up to temperature and it's not circulating, there's gonna be more wear and tear in that initial period. But after that, things will be fairly gentle and that engine will go through the whole tank of fuel. You'll probably get a lot more moisture building up inside the exhaust system because the combustion process, it's using less fuel. It's just doing what it can to tick over. It's not trying to put more heat in. So those vapors will tend to collect in the exhaust. I've seen cars at shows where the engine has been idling for long periods of time and you can see the water burbling out of the exhaust at the back. So certainly a lot more moisture build up. That's not great for your exhaust system. The fact you've got water in the exhaust can increase the corrosion on the exhaust. 
items inside the exhaust like the catalyst the dpf they're not really designed to be submerged in vast quantities of water or moisture inside the engine so it's not great it won't particularly do much damage just having the engine idling and having lots of moisture building up but it's going to take a toll really on the engine oil that's going to absorb a lot of the moisture so the engine oil is going to become diluted and less effective at lubricating the inside of the engine so in a lot of cases you're just storing up potential future problems or creating a need to service the car more regularly rather than doing direct damage to the engine itself in some cases where you've got a mechanical water pump the coolant inside the engine is circulating a lot more slowly when the car is idling there have been instances where people have overheated an engine just because it's idling but in most modern engines you don't have to worry about that they've been very well designed and it's pretty unlikely that an engine is going to overheat while it is just ticking over but is that the best way of warming up the engine what can you do you can't drive the car because it's not safe to do so with all that frost and ice it's freezing cold inside you need a little bit of comfort so rather than just leave your car idling on the drive, the recommendation from people I've spoken to and my own opinion is that you put a little bit of load on the engine, you increase the RPM. So the amount to which you do that will depend greatly on the engine itself. You won't be looking to rev the engine like crazy. In most cases, people will add about 200, 300 RPM. That's all you need. Just that little bit of load takes it above the tick over and gets that engine into the zone where it is starting to warm up. So some people will hold back and wait for the initial revs to drop, the oil to start properly circulating. In reality, that will only take about 30 seconds on most modern cars, most modern engines but you certainly don't want to be sitting there with a brick on the accelerator pedal to warm the engine up quickly you want to avoid those high rpm all the while the engine is still potentially cold so watching the coolant temperature display in the car is not actually that accurate it gives you an indication as to what's happening in the engine but it would be far better to have an oil temperature which gives you an exact reading as to what is going on in the engine and a lot of these in-car temperature gauges just seem to approximate they are designed really to sit on the middle and just indicate if it's running too hot or if you're in the cold zone so the coolant does take a little while to get up to operating temperature and in most cases the engine gets up to temperature a bit more quickly than that it's a good idea to get an oil temperature sensor fitted to your car just to be extra sure um, but also avoid those short journeys so if you've got say three journeys to do in a week and they'd all be short journeys can you do them all on the same day so at least some of them are on a warm or a partially warm engine that will reduce the risk that you have for the short journeys that you're doing on the car under cold conditions or cold engine conditions. So that'll help prolong the life of the engine, just rearranging your schedule a little bit. So for most people, it's not inconvenient, but it does pay to sometimes to just drive around the block, make sure the engine is warmer. If you're forced to do a short journey, at least give the engine the chance to get up to its correct operating temperature. And then when you jump in the car for the return journey, at least that return journey is going to be under a warm engine, a warm engine condition. So if you've got a turbo on your engine, it's also important to allow a bit of time for the turbo and the oil in the turbo to cool down after you've done a bit of spirited driving. So I've done another video that specifically goes into turbo engines and it explains the five things that people commonly do to turbo engines that will reduce the life expectancy of the turbocharger itself. So I hope this video has been useful to you. Please boot that like button because that really helps us to get out there. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find interesting if you're interested in getting better long-term reliability and performance from your car. See you in this next video. Thanks for watching.